All right, let's look at using keys instead of passwords with OpenSSH to log in to one machine from another machine. So I have uh, two machines up right here. I have my server and my client. Now, let's say the server wants to log into the clients normally and, well, doesn't want to use passwords. And this can be important for automating tasks, running things on the client machines without the client being involved. There's all kinds of reasons why you might want to do this. All right, so first of all, we want to start by generating some keys for the server to use. So my server has a .sh directory. If you don't have one, you can create one. Um, but the easiest way to create one is actually to use the SSH key gen, SH key gen utility. If you just run that by itself, it will ask you what you want to do. I'm in the Joseph user and it wants to create this ID underscore RSA file. So hit enter, S me if I want a passphrase. If you want an automated task, you do not want a passphrase. Otherwise it prompts you for the passphrase, kind of like a password. You press enter, enter again, it generates your key. All right, there are two files. It has the ID underscore RSA is your private key and the id underscore rsa dot pub is your public key. So I go into my dot ssh directory and I can see that I have the authorized keys file that I've created earlier. And then I have this id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa dot pub. What I want to do is get the id underscore rsa dot pub file over to my client machine. So just so we can make sure that things aren't confused anywhere, I'm going to copy my ID underscore RSA dot pub file to something else. So you copy ID RSA dot pub to server dot pub. It doesn't really have to be done this way, but it makes it cleaner if you know where it's coming from. All right, so now these files on my client machine, uh, I try going to my SSH directory and I discover there is no directory. So I want to create it. So I make the directory .ssh, and then the permissions are set incorrectly because they're, well, if I take a look at the permissions, you can see that it created the SSH directory. It gave it the SSH home type, which is good, but the permissions are permissive, allows anybody in there. So I want to change permissions. So I do chmod700 on my .sh directory. And um, if it doesn't have SSH home T, which it does in this case, you can do restore, restore con on my .sh directory and it will change the context back to the correct type, which you can see is SSH home T. If you're not using SSA, if you're not using uh, SE Linux, then it doesn't really matter. All right, so I go into my .ss, my SSH directory, and I take a look around, and it's empty. All right, that's good. Now I want to copy this server file from the server to the client machine. So I do SCP for secure copy my server .pub file over to 10.230.150 dot two and then I want to put it into the directory of dot sh dot there dot sh you can also specify individual users if you want um, I am currently logged in as Joseph on both machines so it'll pick Joseph but if you are you logged in a different user you can tell it the user at the IP address colon the location all right so now it prompts you for for accepting the key, I say yes. I type in my password and it copies the file over. All right, this side I can see I now have a server.pub file. If I do not have an authorized keys file, I can directly, well, move this file over to authorized keys. Or if I want to, I can append this one to the end of the file. So I can do cat server.pub and use two greater than signs to append it to the end. So if I have multiple machines logging in, you might want to append it. So I call it 
authorize underscore authorize keys. All right. Now, take a look at this file. Let's look at the authorized keys file. You can see it has this SSH key right here. And this is the key. And it says it's Joseph at server dot example dot com. So I can keep tracking which one it is. All right. Now back in the server machine, I'm going to try copying the same file over. And before it prompted me for a password, this time it still prompts me for a password. So why is that? It doesn't like to have files that are, well, readable. So I want to change permissions. So I do chmod600 authorize keys. Change it so it is now only readable by, well, myself. Now I try this again. Copy the same exact file over. And this time it copies over and does not prompt me for a password. I can now directly log into my machine, 10.230.150.2 without a password. I can see that it went from the server to the client. I can exit back out. Uh, if it was a different username, I would put the username in front. This, um, I can exit out again. I can even run commands on the other machine. So in quotes here, I can do ls minus al. And so what it does is logs in, runs the command, and then logs out. So this is my directory on the other machine. I can even do something like just to verify it. I can do host name. And it runs client.example.com, whereas if I do it locally, I can see I'm server.example.com. So you can put this in scripts and all kinds of things to make it so you can automate tasks. And that's amazing. And that's with OpenSSH and key-based authentication.